Hi everyone, this is Katie Carney and this is my floss tube number 52. Uh, not to be mistaken for one year's worth of floss tubes. This is like two and a half, I think. Or maybe two. I don't know. doesn't matter. Anyway, uh, today is Sunday, October 10th. Uh, and it's been just over three weeks, I think. No, three weeks since my last floss tube video. I have had a wild and wacky couple weeks. Um, it's been wonderful. The, I, I did not see you. So the week after my last video was my dear friend Susie's birthday celebration. Um, and she and my friend Tara, we had lunch together and then I made a cake and they came here and we did a fall craft. Um, and so I'm going to show you a finish right now and then I will continue to update you. So uh, a couple weeks ago, we did these, I found them on Pinterest uh, for work. We have elevators and I, it's where like all the sisters' rooms are listed, but you decorate them with like funny quotes and memes and pictures and I have like leaves and stuff in them and I was on Pinterest looking for this stuff and I found a pattern to make fabric pumpkins. So I used stash fabric that I had, and then I bought a um, fat quarter bundle of fall fabric and Halloween fabric at Joann's. It was a term, they're very, very easy. And if you're only doing five or six by yourself, it'll take a couple hours at the most. We did six, 12, 18, 19, 22 and I did most of the work and everything I craft upstairs um, this is my that's my bedroom and then this is my crafty room and then the spare bedroom is where my um, one of my sewing machines is everything had to go downstairs because I was doing this with friends and there's not enough room up here for other people so it was a tremendous amount of work <laughs> One person left at 3, and then the next person left at, like, 4.15 or 5, and then I had to finish, and then I had to clean it all up. So it was wonderful, and they were very happy with their pumpkins, but I need to remember that these things that I do at my house end up being a tremendous amount of work for me, <laughs> and I end up being very, very tired, which is fine. Uh, but I'm going to show you the pumpkins. So first off, I did three hot... So... The three people that were here each did six, except I did a seventh um, because I couldn't remember what fabric I picked. So I was like, well, it's my house. I'll just do two. And then Jen, um, my good friend Jen, who I make the pillows for, I did three for her, which she already has. I mailed them to her. I had hoped to film before I mailed them and I just didn't have time. So for now, I have my Halloween ones on this like Lazy Susan that I got at Target. This is my favorite. This fabric was in that fat quarter bundle from Joann's and I love it. And I have a little piece left that I'm gonna back a pillow with. And then this was also in that. This is, I love this. And then this was stash. So these are my Halloween ones. I love it. Um, and I just have them on a shelf. And then my fall ones. Here are the two small ones. So these ones I used, it's just fabric. Oh geez, I just dropped one. I'm gonna have to pick it up. Uh, it's just fabric. This is um, either Anchor or DMC floss to make the veins. And then on the Halloween ones we used, um, I don't remember what they're called. Kids use them for crafts a lot. Uh, and then, hold please. For the fall ones, I used the like flower wire stuff that you can buy at Joann's. So here's my, this is the medium size. This is the small size. This is the, I, I love this fabric by the way. This is the large size. I love this fabric. This is from that fat quarter bundle from Joann's, the fall one. Um, I want to make a, oh, oopsie, I'll fix that in a second. I want to make a quilt out of this. It's like this 
tannish gray fabric, which is green and yellow. I love it. So there's that one. And then the big one. I didn't use any floss on. I got this as a remnant from Joann's. And I cut it in three, and each of us got a big pumpkin this size. Uh, one of them does have the veins. And then for my friend Tara's and mine, these are the last ones I did. I kind of liked them just floofy and funny like this. I will say that on camera, like they take, they photograph fine, but they don't take the best video. <laughs> so anyway, um, that was two Saturdays ago. I think it was Saturday. And then last weekend, um, traditionally my boyfriend and I go on a like fall foliage train trip. Obviously in 2020, we did not. And in 2019, instead of a fall, we technically took a train. We went to Manhattan and we went to the Met. So we did take the train into the city, but we did not do like our uh, fall foliage, like actual excursion. We just happened to be on the train in October. Um, and this one, we drove up to Utica, New York, which is about three hours from Scranton. We left around 5.30 in the morning and we picked up the train there and it took us to the Adirondacks. Uh, we were almost in Canada. The leaves up there were just these big, vibrant red. It was cool. It was cloudy. It rained all day long. A very light rain, like a drizzle. Um, and although that was annoying, usually we've had really nice weather on these fall foliage trips and it's always been hot and it was nice to be able to like wear a sweater and a scarf and the train was really nice you can very you could very much tell that they do this kind of trip all year long um and then we took the train back obviously to utica and we drove five hours <laughs> to philadelphia <laughs> we literally had to drive through scranton to get to philly so we drove to Philly and we stayed, well, technically we didn't arrive till Sunday morning. And then we had brunch in Philly for after we left the hotel and we saw the orchestra. It was their first time playing at the Kimmel Center, which is their home uh, since, well, we saw them March 8th of 2020. And then they played together once more they did a facebook concert that tuesday or wednesday and then they have obviously played together they they did all their summer stuff this year but they have not played inside in philadelphia with an audience since so we were there for that which was really really special and so fun and so good to be together again like we obviously work together but to travel and to do something and to see the orchestra to see how they've changed um it felt almost normal uh, which was very very special um i think we're all weary so it was nice to have a, a normal weekend uh and then tuesday <laughs> I took uh, the afternoon off, unpaid of course, because it's a new job, and we went back to Philadelphia and we saw Yo-Yo Ma, which was, uh, it was amazing. So it was just a wonderful um, few days. And then this weekend, yesterday, my friends that I made the pumpkins with, plus one more, my friend Sarah, all got together. I did a lot of driving because Sarah lives about an hour away and she does not drive. Uh, we got together for lunch, and my friend Tara made a chocolate peanut butter tart from uh, Smitten Kitchen. I highly recommend her recipes. They're very good. Uh, well tested. Um, so she made us a nice lunch. And then, I don't have it up here, but she crocheted us these little pumpkins and stuffed them with candy, which was so sweet. So that was a wonderful day yesterday. And then when I got home last night, um, I put I made some dough for bread. And my two of my cousins spent the night. They are, um, they were spending time with their other set of grandparents, but they wanted to make sure they saw Fra. So they came over, they slept here. I made a huge breakfast this morning. And then this afternoon, Fra is, and I quote, bored. And when she's bored, she nags. She's a nag. 
she, I drive too much, I do this too much, I don't do this enough, I should be doing this. It's because she has no one to think about, apparently, but me. And there's me going, you know, you have five other grandchildren, can't you worry about them? So, although what I wanted to do today was sit around and stitch after my cousins left and my dad, I took her on a ride to see the leaves and then we went out for a very late lunch slash early dinner. I won't cook dinner tonight. Um, and I told her she's not allowed to tell me she's bored anymore. She doesn't want, and the thing is she's bored and I get it, but she doesn't want to do anything. She doesn't want to craft. She doesn't want to read. She doesn't want to do puzzles. She doesn't want to do a puzzle. She doesn't want to cook. She doesn't want to clean. She doesn't want to do. So anyway, my grandmother is bored. She's bored and it's a lot to deal with. <laughs> So it's been a wonderful couple weeks. Um, I am glad that I took her for a ride today. It was nice for both of us. So, and obviously any time we get to spend together is special. Okay, so now let's get to actual stitching 11 minutes in. Although I did show you a finished object, so you know, it's fine. Uh, I have two finishes today. Um, and I would like to get these get the first one FFO'd either tonight or tomorrow night. Um, and that is Primrose Cottage Stitches, Happy Halloween. Uh, this was a kit that I bought, came with the cutest little cup and all the called for fancy floss, which was three colors of weeks, um, onyx, persimmon, per persimmon, and parchment <laughs> and it came with two skeins each and this is still from the first because I used a 16 count mystery dyed fab uh, Ada and I used one strand so here's my finish and I just I think it's very cute I really I I didn't initially know if I thought that the fancy floss was worth it, but particularly the orange, I think the orange was definitely, definitely worth it. Um, so yeah, came out very, very cute. I actually really like this spider. Um, I don't like spiders, but I thought he came out really adorable. I am hoping that I have enough of that candy corn fabric to back this and make it into a pillow. So we shall see. Um, and then I just have this in this um, autumn royalty bag from Lindy Stitches. And I think, hopefully, sorry, I'm making a mess here. Hopefully I'll have time to start at least one of these stitch cards that I just threw on the floor. Be in my bonnet stitch cards. So that's my first finish. And then I need the pattern. So hang on one second. Wait, don't, wait, what am I doing? Okay, sorry about that. Um, my next finish is the first part of the Frosted Pumpkin uh, Halloween Town. So I started, there we go, with the bakery here. Well, it's actually just this part. I copied Made by Michelle McGraw, and what she did was break these up into small pillows. So I did the bakery first, so let me show that to you. Um, this is actually in a bit of haul. I discovered that Kelly Stadola's Big Bitsy Bob, so not a Bitsy, a bo bit, Big Bitsy, I don't know, the bigger version of her Bitsy Bob bags, uh, fits perfectly in my lunch bag. So I ordered this and almost going to show you the pattern. Let's not do that. The, it all fits perfectly. So here is my finish. This is on 14 count. Picture this plus murky Ada with the converted DMC and the DM called for DMC. So it's all DMC except for this hot pink is bubblegum by weeks. It calls for bubblegum by classic color works. All bubblegum colors are the same. So I actually, I use two threads on the 14 count, which normally you need this. I, I don't think one thread would have been enough, but it might have been 
a little too much. But anyway, I love it. I need to do, now that I know about what size they are, I need to do a better job cutting the fabric because I don't want to waste it because I bought a, I think a half yard um, and I, I don't, I, I will order more, but I want to make sure I'm not wasting. So I really like the murky. Thank you, Michelle, for the idea. Uh, another thing, here's the colors. I don't know, they were not all used for this, I don't think, but the colors are just this great, vibrant, bright, happy, Halloween, fall wonder. I'm going to start another one probably tomorrow morning for work. I taped with washi tape the color chart. I taped the color chart onto the zipper part of the bag that I should close. Um, and that's been really great to make sure that I have that. And then, you know, I'm able to keep the extra flosses and my needles here. And then these scissors are a little heavy, so they kind of stick, but not great. But these Lindy Stitches scissors that you get on her website, they stay perfectly. So just, just a little FYI on the on the magnet placement. So that's another finish. I will not finish this, I don't think, until they're all done. But that's done. And I have, as you all know, all of this, obviously. And then I have the next in the series and some of the smaller ones, like Welcome to Battyville, or the Batty Bakery. I'm gonna have two bakeries. And I am just planning to use all of the colors that are for, I like these colors, so I'm gonna use them for everything. So stay tuned to see what happens, and they are being housed in my favorite Halloween project bag that I made myself. I love this bag. So that's my two finishes. My FFOs are my pumpkins, and now I have a tremendous amount of whips, an absurd amount of whips. <laughs> so first off, I'll show you very quickly. Um, on the way to Philly on Tuesday, I got about an inch done on my sweater. So you can see we continue to grow um, on my very boring gray sweater that I am knitting. Um, I'll take it with me again on Friday. I took it with me over the weekend, but I drove to Utica Saturday morning and then I did not bring my knitting with me on the train because it's too big. And then on the way to Philly, it was already almost dark and I was exhausted. So I did not knit. Okay. Next whip coming to America by With a Needle and Thread. I am using 36 count vintage country mocha with the called for fancy floss and DMC. So I started this a couple weeks ago. I haven't worked on it in about two weeks, if I'm being honest with you. And here are the flosses. They're also very, very pretty. Not that I've used most of them yet. I have definitely used the um, Oscar and Grits. <laughs> so last time, I think I told you that I was like, I don't understand why people say they can't see certain things on their fabric. And then I got to the next part. So my, I had wanted to get the pilgrims done and I did. So you can see I have this pilgrim is done and then these guys are technically in the ship and it shows up much better on camera but you can barely see this guy depending on the lighting i did back stitch him the e seagull i didn't back stitch the other ones obviously um but yeah you can barely see it but that's okay um i think it's cute so far i really i actually like the border quite a bit um, so yeah, we keep on keeping on. It's all we can do. So yeah, coming to America. Um, 
I will probably pick this back up soon um, and I'll turn the scroll rod. I just I actually wanted to be able to show it before I did that. All right, then two Sundays ago or last Sunday, I had another new start and it's part of that collection and it's Harvest Blessings by Brenda Gervais with Thy Needle and Thread. This is the companion piece with, to Coming to America. And I kitted this up at the same time from Needlework Corner in Baltimore. Actually just got my coupon, birthday coupon from her. She gives you during your birthday month 30% off one item and 25% off the rest of your purchase. So I, um, I need to decide what I'm going to get this year. So anyway, here's Harvest Blessings. I am using... Oh, what am I using for this? I might have it written down somewhere. I don't remember where the bag is. I'm pretty sure that this is 36, no, this is 40 count oaken, got there. Using the called for fancy floss and the DMC, which I actually don't have on my ring here. Um, I'm just pulling from Coming to America. So these are the, the fancy floss colors. Uh, we're just gonna put that there. So these are the fancy floss colors and then it uses some of the DMC from Coming to America. So there's that. And then so far I've done the Female Pilgrim and the Basket, and I will probably start the corn tonight or tomorrow. This is on um, a roller frame, and this sits beautifully here. You can probably see it. It sits beautifully on my Dovco frame just like that. So I've been really enjoying working on that. The That's my light when I sit at my desk and I really need to change out that floor lamp with the one that is sitting in front of me right now that has an arm so that I can pull the arm down so I can see. Um, I just need a little more light right over 40 count at night. My light, my light, I don't have an overhead. So all I have is floor lamps. So it's always dark in my house. Um, so yeah, that, I love it. Love it so far. Um, then I also, I took this, my Prairie Schooler Santa bag. I just grabbed this and took this with me when Mark and I went last weekend, carried it around all day on Saturday in the rain. Didn't work on it at all, but then I did work on it a little bit. And that's the 1988 Prairie Schooler Santa. I have the entire collection of Santas except for two that I'm missing that I hopefully will get someday. But they're in like the 2012 and 2013 or 13 and 14. I got a while. So this is 1988. Um, I started this when I went to Ohio. I don't work on these all that often, but they're very good travel stitching because they are very few colors and big blocks of color. So here's the colors. Um, Love them. This is called for DMC. And then I am using 18 count Fiddler's Cross for all of my Prairie Schooler Santas. It's like an oatmeal color. Um, and the fabric comes folded in four like this. And one Santa fits perfectly on a fourth. So last you saw this. Hang on, let me get the needle out of the way. Last you saw this, I had not done any of the red. So the border was done and the feet. So I started the jacket and I completed the red on his hat. Um, this is probably about an hour of stitching. Uh, I really like Prairie Schooler Santas. I will probably go back and continue working on this um, a little bit just to get it done. Um, but who knows, maybe I won't. It's a very good, these are very good grab and go projects, which is what I like. And I like that I already have the floss all ready to go. I like that it's Ada or Fiddler's Cloth, so it's very easy to grab. I don't need a ton of light, um, so that works out really well. Sorry about that. Okay. Then I had a new start. So, I don't know what Galleria is, but it was two weekends ago. I did not go, obviously. I don't I don't know what it is. I think it's like market for the fall. I don't know. 
but Stephanie Webb from Lindy Stitches was supposed to go, and she was taking Luminous Fiber Arts, quite a few of her patterns with her, and she didn't end up going, and she posted everything on her website, and I saw this, which is Friendship Series Sashing Squirrels. I love them! Um, fell in love with this pattern and messaged Jen and was like, hey, you want to do this with me? I know you don't really want to, but do you want to do it with me? You stitch it really fast. It won't take you long. Look at how cute that is. Um, and she said yes, which I'm sure she regrets. I ended up just getting the PDF of this chart. Um, but I pulled the, if I had the fancy floss, I, I pulled it. Um, which was chrysanthemum and black coffee. Uh, otherwise, I am using the either called for or converted DMC. They're very autumnal. Guys, I'm like all over the place today. <laughs> Sorry, I'm tired. They are very autumnal colors, um, as you can see. And I just keep brain and floss but anyway there's the colors and it called for I to be honest don't know what it called for let me check uh, model a stitch using two strands over two threads using 32 count sparrow linen by luminous fiber arts um, they suggested pictures plus de bloom or that was the Weigart vintage country mocha I am not using any of that I pulled a 32 count um, club fabric from August 2020. It's a pumpkin color and it is perfect. I hope, Jen, I hope you like this because I love it. So I started this on Friday. I am almost obviously done the border. Um, although I have a feeling now that I miscounted, but we'll, we'll deal with that in a little bit. It's a future Katie problem. So I worked, I started this Friday morning and I worked on it for a couple hours and then I did a little bit of work, maybe a half hour today. Um, I wanna get the border done just so I can work, just so the border can be done and I know it's done. And then I just wanted a little change so I just did that little starry, snowflakey leaf thing in the corner. So I love the floss on this fabric. I think all the colors look great, so. That's another whip. That's a new start from Friday. I've been in the mood to start things, if you can't tell, which is why um, uh, Pumpkin Hollow Quilts, she calls it her mocking, what is it, her mocking basket of whips? Well, I'm, I'm getting to be there with her. I have so many big whips. <laughs> um, but, you know, you're about to see that I am working on one of them, which is Consider the Lilies. This is a sal I'm doing with Made by Michelle McGraw and Sarah K. Stitches. It is either Consider the Lilies or um, His Eyes on the Sparrow, which are patterns by Heartstring Samplery. Consider the Lilies is the one I'm doing. It is 24 pages long, so I am doing a page a month. I am caught up have not started October yet. I am using 36 count. I am using 36 count something. Why can I never remember? Do I have it written down? I don't. I'm using a 36 count in the called for floss. One thread. Look at all those colors. Fancy floss. One thread over two. They are beautiful. And so the last part I did was the tree, the first part of the tree. So it was from this head over. That tree took an absurd amount of time. It shouldn't have taken as long as it did. It's beautiful now that it's done. Well, it's not done. I still have half the tree. Um, so that was page nine, I think. So it's probably getting to be almost too big to hold up. Can you see? I don't think you can you see the whole thing. Yeah, you can. 
So there's the tree. It's beautiful. It really is beautiful. It's such a gorgeous piece. I cannot wait for it to all be done, but don't think that's going to make me stitch it any faster. <laughs> all these little motifs are time consuming, but I love it. So that is Consider the Lilies. Um, so yeah, I will start page 10 ASAP because I don't want to fall behind again. Because in September, I did July, August, and September. I did finish September, October 1st. I, um, I was working on, I had finished the apples and was working on the leaves. And every time I turned around, there was more leaves. And I just, I couldn't stay up any later and I just finished it the next day. So that's that. And... I think that's it for whips although I did want to show you actually this is another remnant that I bought at Joann's the day I got all the other um, fabric for the pumpkins and for the luminous fiber arts piece I am tempted even though it's kind of a dark color where is it my pumpkin color is not the light color that it calls for and although this is like woodland creature fabric and how cute it's like a it's a flannel how cute would this very like how cute is that together why can't I make this work let's do it this way guys I stink I'm sorry Forgive me. See, isn't that cute together? So I think mine, I will back with that. If Jen ever finishes, I don't know if she started. If she does, I'm sure, I'm assuming that I will be the one to make it into a pillow for me. So I, I will probably use that fabric for me too. I, I think it's adorable. And then I'm just going to use... Um, black chenille trim which I happen to have I will hot glue it on Michelle sews Michelle sews all of her trim on and I have such such awe of her patience um because I do not have patience I'm like give me the glue gun it'll be fine so there's that and I think that's it for whips for me I have a little bit of haul first off I finally so they sent out the fall issue of Punch Needle and Primitive Stitcher on the 7th of September and I got mine on the 6th of October. I was beginning to think it wasn't coming. I had emailed. I was like, I don't think it's coming. But it did. So Vanna's finishing tutorial this time is on page, here we go, 44. So in Punch Needle Primitive Stitcher, you get a finishing tutorial from Vana in every issue. And I do really well with photo tutorials. So this was it. It's a like, she paints this basket and she does this finish. Um, and so the basket, I'm trying to see if there's like a picture of just the basket. Yeah, see? The basket doesn't have a top. She makes the top and then mounts the stitched piece to the top. And I found at Target these boxes in the dollar spot that were five dollars. Like they weren't a dollar, they were five. Um, that you could either mount on the top here or you could mount in this if you wanted to. Um, they're not good wood or anything, they were $5. But I am hoping to try that with Vanna's excellent tutorial. So thank you, Vanna, as always. Um, oh my lord. Guys, what is happening to me today is why you need to close your project bags. I just keep dropping everything on the floor. Close your project bags. I understand that people don't like the zipper, but zip them closed. I finally, um, after really wanting it and deciding not to get it, 
it went on sale and I got Stephanie Webb's Susie, Susie Needlemaker bag, the bag, which is so pretty, and the pattern. Susie Susie Sampler Maker, How Does Your Garden Grow? I actually like this more than Mary Mary Needlework, or um, uh, quite a bit more actually. I think that's really cute. Um, and it looks less stitch heavy. You'll remember that I started Mary Mary Needlemaker, had a huge problem with it, and had to start over and didn't. So it came with the pattern, the bag. She has a new um, free a uh, little ornament that you get. The old one was a mouse. This is um, Dee's new hat. It's a little bird. You know, she loves birds. And it came with Lady.Create trim and the fancy floss. It is, I think, a couple weeks and then mostly classic color works. And I love these colors. They're like very bright like her, except more muted. Like it's fun muted colors. And then it came with these lovely little candies that I'm going to give away because I like my teeth. I'll give them to children who have baby teeth that can, you know, be pulled out. So I got that. Then my birthday is this coming Saturday and in the mail a dear dear friend sent me Jane Austen embroidery and this is from the Victoria and Albert Museum. So we've got the Victoria and Albert Museum which is my favorite museum I've ever visited. Jane Austen and embroidery. Neshka you always hit it out of the park. Thank you so much. I uh, it's it's gorgeous. Um, like come on. Quilted tablet sleeve. It's, it's beautiful. Love this book. So excited to just like lay in bed before I go to sleep and look at the pretty eye candy. So there's that. Then on Amazon, on a whim, I got Autumn at Not Forgotten Farm. It was on sale for like $7. And I have always wanted to do this. Uh, so that's, that's the plan. That's from Amazon. And then I think that's all my haul actually, but I do have plans. I have many, many plans. So my first plan is to get this done as soon as possible. My second plan is to start another one of the Halloween Town from Frosted Pumpkin. Another plan is to finish the small um, Harvest Blessings as quick as possible also. And actually, I think I will use, if there's any left of this, I will back this with this. But I can't, I, there must be some left because it was a fat quarter. Um, and then I have another thing I want to start. And it's from Punch Needle and Primitive Stitcher Fall. And it is Lindy... Uh, Stephanie Webb's piece in this, which is Bathing in the Asters. So it's this cat. Oh, I, I, I don't want to bend my magazine. Here we go. So it's Stephanie Webb's <laughs> Bathing in the Asters. Um, my friend has a miserable tuxedo cat like that, so I'm going to make this for her for Christmas. This calls for a gray Zweigart. But I am either going to use this 14 count Ada that I dyed myself, that's like purple and green, or 18 count Ada vintage from Hobby Lobby. This is Weigart, but not the, the gray that it's called for. So I'm going to start that as soon as the luminous fiber arts piece is done or when I can't stand it anymore. Um, I should be back before Halloween, God willing, and have a finished pillow to show you. Um, yeah, there should be a reason. I don't think I have anything else going on other than next weekend. And it's, I have to say, I'm not having conference to stress about for the American Wine Society is really great for my blood pressure. 
So um, I did not, although it looks like I got a lot of stitching done, I did not. Um, I'm dealing with some TM, I have TMJ. And it's definitely worse because I sit like hunched over when I stitch and at my desk and when I sleep, I hunch all the time. It's a bad habit, don't recommend. Um, and it hurts all here and it makes my teeth hurt so I feel like I have cavities that I don't have um, there were a couple days that were really really bad um, like painful crying bad uh, but it's gotten better again I just have to be careful I can't stitch for like five or six hours straight which I shouldn't be doing anyway so anyway um, like I said I had a lot of whips to show you and I had such a good time catching up with you. I hope that you're well and you're safe and you're happy and I will see you in two weeks. Stay safe and be well.